All right, next question. What do I do if my kid relapses? I'll let you go first. Yeah, you can go. Hit your knees. <laughs> Hang on. It's probably not the first time. Probably it's not the last. Um, for me personally, relapse is dependent on where I'm at in my program. The first time it happened, I was devastated, ready to throw myself on the railroad tracks, calling my calling the counselor. I was in that case. Um, relapse is part of recovery, and they're gonna fall, they're gonna slip, they're gonna either go back out, they're gonna stay a while, they're gonna be so ashamed they get sober again. Um, you just have to hold it in the back of your mind that it's probably going to happen. So you buckle down on what are your shots, what are the consequences, you, you tow the line, you don't back up, you don't coddle, you accept it, you tell them you love them, um, and you love yourself. And you know, if you, if you did something wrong to contribute to that relapse because you gave in to their whim, own it. If, unless you sat down and either did drugs with them or drank with them, you probably aren't responsible. So own what's yours and own that they're on this journey and it's not going to be just a straight line. And get in touch with your sponsor for sure. Uh, uh, I'll let Mark go next. <clears throat> Speak loud. All right. Talk, just um, talk about it from your perspective. Yeah. What helped you get through relapse? Um, definitely feeling um, shameful and Okay, first of all, I, I relapsed uh, quite a bit in my first two years uh, being in Cornerstone. Um, I really couldn't put together more than, you know, anywhere from two weeks to three months. Uh, and it always seemed like I was, you know, back at square one. Um, and one thing that I did want to point out that after, you know, a few months and whatever of being in the program, every time I did come back, it always seemed like my mom was, uh, like really, really calm about the whole situation uh, and everything that was happening with me. Uh, and like, I do think that it was because of her involvement with the parent group and, you know, going to her Al-Anon meetings and working with her sponsor. Um, but for me, I just did not like myself when I was, you know, first in Cornerstone. I had all these uh, beliefs, these false beliefs of, you know, you know, anything that had to do with, you know, having friends and what would make me, you know, appear to be better in other people's eyes, um, getting acceptance, all of these things like altered my thoughts and actions for a really long time. Um, and I think it just had to keep happening um, until I was finally ready to change, um, until I was so deep in like my depression, um, for me, another thing that stood out that was very like strange for me was like suicidal thoughts and uh, and just like not liking myself, you know, I'm um, just getting tired of it. Um, and with that, like that started with honesty. Um, I had to get honest. Um, I had to be the one to get honest. I couldn't get caught um, for me personally. Um, I had to call my sponsor. I had to go in a group the next day, you know, and be the one. I had to call Kirk first, um, you know, uh, I just felt different about it. Like I felt, no, I didn't call Kirk. Um, I remember I got honest in group after lying to him um, and I was just ready to change. I like hit a meeting after that. You know, I remember I got um, put into a host home and you know, after that it was just like, like what he said, like hitting meetings, uh, getting coffee, uh, working a coffee bar, trying to find little places I could be of service. Uh, you know, I think hosting was really important for me. My host told me that I had to sit at the front of every meeting um, and share every meeting or else I wasn't gonna have a place to stay uh, and praying on my knees every day and every night, you know, and those little things helped me um, in my first three months. And I think it only really got better um, from there. Cool, good answer.
So the question was, what do I do if my kid relapses? The um, part that I would add is to take it very, very, very seriously. I mean, relapse should always be taken very, very seriously. And it's, yes, it is gonna be part of the recovery process, but it's, it's also, it is, you never know what's gonna happen. I mean, I worked with a guy one time where uh, the, um, he relapsed and within 48 hours, he was downtown buying crack and he got murdered. Okay, so there's, there's, um, and everybody on this panel, like we have all known people that have died tragically where it was not, uh, they weren't years and years and years back into their addiction, okay? So relapse, whether it's with substances or mental health or codependency should always be taken very, very, very seriously. The, um, and that the other part, it, I love that what Brenda was talking about is what good, healthy teens do, and that's what a family is, is when there is a failure, they evaluate it. They evaluate it, they break it down. What did I do? Where, what did I miss? Where was I enabling? Where was I inconsistent with my shots? Where was I, um, where did I react rather than respond? All right, and there's an opportunity. Failure is not a dirty word. Like failure is an opportunity for growth. Failure is an opportunity to like reboot self-esteem. And I think that, uh, I think that relapse, if it handled properly, can help raise a bottom and can really help um, change, change the dynamics in the family. What ends up happening though, is with oftentimes with relapse is um, it exposes the dysfunction in the family and, and, and parental codependency. And so the path is always changing. You know, you bounce from treatment center to treatment center, or psychiatrist to psychiatrist, and you end up on the, in the merry-go-round, you know, in the recovery treatment world merry-go-round. And um, that is not really good for long-term sustainable outcomes. There is something to be said about you know, especially from a, a parent perspective and working on yourself and continuing to get stronger and stronger and stronger with boundaries, whether that's here in Cornerstone or whether that's in Al-Anon, that's, that's the most important thing that will help prevent relapse when there's a, a dynamic shift in the family systems. And that means parenting, parenting being more consistent. Okay, next question.